Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Productivity Mastery, the podcast that's bringing you some of the most inspiring leaders from all across the globe. And we're talking about topics connected to leadership, productivity, entrepreneurship, um, time management, you name it, all exciting topics. Often we talk about topics connected to entrepreneurship and uh, super excited to welcome our guest today, Ersin Istun. Um, I had the chance to meet Ersin recently in Cologne. Uh, we were both speakers at a conference called the Pirate Summit. Shout out to the guys from Pirate Summit. Amazing conference. And I randomly came across Ersin. Um, I don't know. He asked me a question or something. And we started this conversation for maybe half an hour, maybe an hour, um, going really deep into the importance of personal development especially to startups, especially to people who are building companies, how important it is to evolve yourself as a key to grow your own startup. And I was like, Erson, I need to bring you on to the pot and we need to discuss this because there are so many founders listening to this and sometimes founders prioritize their company a little bit too much and forget that they're the main driver of the company. So we're going to dig into that. But first of all, good morning, Erson. How are you today? Good morning, Stoyan. Thank you for the invitation and the intro. Very nice. Thank you very much. It's great to be here with you and all the audience. Hello to everyone from my side. Great having you, man. And uh, maybe just to give a bit of a context, instead of me presenting you this time, uh, why don't you give me a bit of an idea about who is Ersin? Uh, you are CEO of Brick, uh, organization that was presented to us well, doing a lot of great stuff in the startup world in in your own area so um how how did you end up in the startup environment and what's your mission with brick yes so when i was a long and a young child i would never have in mind to do what i'm doing today so it's it was never a plan doing the stuff and the work what i do today because you can't plan so 20 30 years in advance and you don't know so many things where you can say, okay, at a, at a young child, this is what I'm going to do. So maybe in some cases it, it happens really. It's easy for jobs like uh, being a, a doctor or a lawyer or a policeman. This you know the, from the environment and the child, then you have the dream to be one of those. So when I was a young child, my dream was to be an architect. And then I started, um, I decided to do a special high school what is focused on um, art and visual communication. So I could prepare my um, art map because this is in Germany it's required when you go to study architecture you need an art map an art art uh, collection of arts so it's 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 mandatory to have this at these times it was and then when I started at this school I learned it's not the art what I what is really um, what I want it's more the business because this was the first time I had a subject called business administration and when you are a young guy, you never hear about business administration. And then I had the opportunity with 18 to learn what is business administration. And this was what I really like felt, okay, this, this is really amazing. I would like to do something with business administration, financial stuff. This is really what I like. I also like art and doing like stuff and drawing. But my passion is more for dealing with numbers and building something, not in terms of construction of buildings, but building businesses. And then I did, I did a professional education in banking. And then in this stage, I learned, okay, it's not just about the business part and the financial part. It was in the early 2000s, where uh, all of the new economy and Google and Amazon's, all these tech companies arised. And then I said, okay, what I want to do is the mix of business and IT. And then I decided to study business informatics. Um, and at this time, it was a dual education together with IBM. At this time, it was a huge brand uh, because they are doing all this um, hardware stuff and all this technology stuff. And then I, I was like mixing, mixing business and uh, IT. And then I did um, sales, a lot of uh, like cold calling and did like um, sell software, hardware and IT services. And then it was like too much sales and I wanted to go to more into the deep, into the processes. How can I really make the process more efficient? How can I contribute to make more revenue or to reduce cost or to, to make people work more productive? 
And then I decided to go uh, um, uh, to start as a consultant because they go into the deep, they're analyzing processes, they're talking with people and uh, preparing all these concepts. How can we make really change in the company? And then I worked 12 years with Ernst and Young in, in, uh, as a management consultant. And I was um, like working on projects, doing all this transformation stuff. So nothing with uh, entrepreneurship and startups. But then after 12 years, I learned, okay, now I, ha I, I have the feeling I have not so many experience in, um, in sales and changing things, what is already um, settled in the, in, in the companies. Um, so how can we change things for the better? Um, then I decided to go to, uh, to bring all these experience and knowledge into younger uh, people who are really founding their companies like startups it's because they have a less decision uh, cycles. It's not that like all these uh, governance processes and uh, politics like you have in, in corporates, but it's not bad because you, you, you need in such kind of uh, structures. But I wanted to make a new move. And then... <clears throat> I um, ended up um, at, at this time's EY um, bought a company called Adventure. It, it was a digital um, um, and, uh, uh, advisor and company builder in, in Berlin. And then I switched to the new company, what was Adventure. And then I had the opportunity in 2019 to develop a, a startup ecosystem in the Ruhr area. It is Compared to Berlin and to Munich, a little bit underdeveloped and not so prominent as a startup hotspot in Germany. But there, are, there is a huge potential because you have more than 22 uh, universities and um, a lot of corporate companies because this is the industrial heart of Germany, 5 million inhabitants. So there's a huge potential, but we are, compared with the potential, not that good in, in building startup ecosystems, building successful um, startups and this was my mission to 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 do my part on this to to make it more visible to the world uh, to 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 make the XRL, to make the development of this ecosystem more uh, faster and last year um, i joined brick i joined means we started with brick because um, brick was founded in uh, last year end of last year uh, by the rag stiftung which is a foundation one of the biggest foundations in germany um, who are a huge investor and they um, had the vision to really strengthen the startup ecosystem and innovation ecosystem in this area. And with Brick, our mission is to empower entrepreneurs and innovators who shape a livable future, full stop. So this is like a huge mission because livable, who doesn't want to shape a livable future? <clears throat> If, if, if you if, if you would ask into the into the audience everybody i guess would say yes definitely i want to so all of these people are invited to be part of brick so we are trying to build like a movement of of this mindset of the new generation of entrepreneurs and innovators who really want to have an impact who really want to make an impact and i believe and we as brick believe that really everybody can do his part <clears throat> uh, on, on this and so what we are doing in, in like um, concretely, we are um, running startup programs like acceleration programs in different um, um, phases. Like we have a 10 weeks program, sprint program. We have a smaller boosters and different other options for startups to tackle their challenges. So we are accepting startups who are doing an impact on shaping a livable future. This might be for example, livable cities. So how can we contribute to make cities more livable? This could be health. And um, if we have the feeling that we can really support you as a startup um, in tackling your next challenge, what could be fundraising, what could be finding your first clients or like growing your client base, um, we are helping those startups with a mentorship and a coaching. So we really buy experts you would require to do your next step. We buy it externally and to give it to you for free. So we don't get any equity. It's not, uh, you don't have to pay. And um, we also invest in startups. So it's like once a startup is in our program, we have the option, the startup has the option to, to get funded. So we will see in this, in this period, but it's not mandatory. 
And we have like 2,500 square meters of um, space we offer for um, entrepreneurs and founders and also for corporate like innovation and um, digital units uh, who want to do something new. So we have like team spaces, dedicated team spaces, open spaces, workshop and event areas, uh, meeting rooms, etc., where we where people really can come together and work together to collaborate. And we're also doing and organizing events so that people are coming together to network and to also raise the visibility of all these young, te young teams. <clears throat> and this is what I do as a COO. So it's like building the team, uh, operationalizing the strategy we have, adjusting uh, the operations. So it's like we act like a startup and um, we are quite well funded with, with the foundation, but we also have to see, okay, what is the market really demanding? What are the founders are demanding? And we have to adapt and change also our offerings as well. Of course. And uh, as you are actually running it as a startup, it's even more interesting because today's topic is about personal development and the role of personal development on you as a founder. And you are kind of running this thing as a founder so you can actually speak from your experience as well. And I wonder, I want to start the conversation from how did you get interested in personal development? And I'm going to give you a bit of an example. When I was doing my bachelor degree in Varo, Bulgaria, I was doing a, a finance bachelor in finance back then, and it was the first year, so I was a freshman, right? Um, one of more my classmates came to me and gave me a book. And it sounds really cheesy now, but gave me a book by Robin Sharma, which was called <laughs> The Monk Who Sold the, His Ferrari. Uh, and I read this book. I, I haven't read books like before. It was just like the, you know, school books, right? Uh, but but he gave me this book. He was like, read it, man. Like, trust me, read 20 pages. If you don't like, it's fine. So I started reading this book and it was like, oh my God, there's, there's so much more in this world, right? Like there's this... You know, you can really grow yourself and you can expand your mind and your horizons and all this stuff about leadership. And so, so I don't know, maybe I've read thousands of books now. I There was a point in my life I would go to any personal development seminar, you know, join Tony Robbins events. I did a coaching education, certification programs, like you name it. And it's been a repeating theme in my life. And I do have to say I give a lot of credit to to this area with respect to my progress, my success in, in certain areas. But I wonder, what was your first meeting yeah. with personal development? Yeah, great question. So I, I think, so as I can remember, it was all the time I was interested in that topic. So I was always asking myself, why are people doing the things they do or why don't they do the things they should do, and even it applies for me. What, why I'm doing all this stuff as a, as the journey I told you how I started with like what I'm doing today, like being an architect and then banking and all this. So why I'm doing the next step I do. So I was always questioning myself, but I, it was not really like on personal development or growth. So it's not like I was not um, studying all this stuff. But then one thing happened, uh, life changing happened in in my life when I was 31. No, I'm. 43 so when i was 31 um, and i was working like um like hell and I, I, not because it was i really like my job and i really do it with passion so if you do like this you're fully committed and you work hours less sleep um, unhealthy um eating etc and then one day i had like a um, heart my, my heart stopped to beat so it was like i was like shut down my 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 body and um, uh, I had to reanimate it. So I had for 30 seconds, my heart, no heartbeat, no pulse, uh, um, and no, no, no breathing. So it was like that. So 30 minutes and they, I, they reanimated me. And then um, after this, I had a great doctor who came to me and said, okay, uh, see guy. <clears throat> And because he, he knew that I was like doing um, management consulting and it's a hard job and you're traveling so much and doing so much work. And I can imagine that and you are building like assets, you're building corporates, you're building um, you know, changing organizations, all this stuff. But don't forget, if you're doing all these assets, what is outside your um, 
your physical or your emotional or whatever body, you're building this. But at this time, you forget the most critical asset you have. And this is you. So if you stop working on your own asset, uh, so you are the basic, the, the, the fundamental of everything else. Uh, and then this was like, for me, okay, uh, this is true and it's so obvious, but we, we don't do it. So we are so um, focused on all the world around us, see the things outside ourselves and forget about ourselves. And this is what happened to me. And it was like a, a heart change. And then I started to think about it. And when you start to think about it, you do some things. Even today, I'm not like doing all this. So always everybody has his um, um times where you forget all about this even if you aren't knowing it but you don't do it but it, it's it's a journey at the end so you have to start it and i want to just make a pause for a second and uh i want to reflect with you and maybe you can kind of give us a bit of a perspective there's many founders out there that not just founders also business professionals consultants that are going through a huge amount of stress sometimes for a long period of time. I wonder now if you can reflect back, where did this situation come from? Like, what were the reasons? Did you, were you exposed to stress for a long period of time? Like, why did this happen? So you were, you know, in a clinical debt or you, you whatever yeah. you call it. I think, so the magic word maybe for this is focus. So I may, may I try to make it more, um, uh, metaphoric with a with a story. So imagine now I would offer you a great deal. So the deal is for each yellow Volkswagen Polo. So you know the Polo, the Volkswagen Polo, and a yellow one for each one. So it's a great opportunity for you to to earn thousands of euros just right just right now, very easily, very quickly. For every license plate number you can give me for a yellow Polo except of yourself, except of your family members and friends. So you will get 10,000 euros. How many can you give me? Like right now? <laughs> yes, with evidence. Zero. So there was a huge opportunity for you right now, very easily to get thousands of euros, and you missed that opportunity, right? So when, when I say... Okay, this opportunity is still valid till end of the year. What will happen? I'll, go, I'll get busy. Yes, you get busy. So you start, you make a plan, you go for on, on the streets where you see, okay, there is a more likelihood to, to catch yellow. So you are really going systematically. Maybe you will hire people telling, okay, I will give you 5,000 euros for each yellow uh, and then 5,000 for you. So you... You are working on this very hardly, right? At till end of the year. So this shows two things. One is if you are really focused, it's very powerful. And you it, it, it is increasing the likelihood to to end up at the objective of at the goal you, you had. Because you're focusing and it's quite clear. Yellow polo, ten thousand for each. Quite clear. And then you are really focused and huge likelihood to to um, to succeed. But it also shows how easy it is to get distracted from outside. So now just with this nice opportunity, I switched your mind and then get you busy to do to do stuff. Maybe you would not never mind. So maybe you wanted to, to meet the girl you want to marry. Maybe you wanted to do the world travel, what you always wanted to do. You wanted to build your business, whatever. So you had your own plans. But now somebody is coming from outside and shows you a huge opportunity and then you are like distracted and this happens all the day so it happens on my project or clients say okay when you do this project then it's great and um if um it also happens in in private environment people uh, friends are telling you let's go like on vacation next week and and so all these distractions all the people coming with their yellow volkswagens and then you are distracted you're not focused on what is what I really want to do? And this happened, I guess, also to me because I was like in this yeah, um, wheel. So, okay, always, because if it's a busy, a busy world, there are so many opportunities or they seem like good opportunities and you are working and you're jumping into this opportunity. And uh, But 
you, sometimes it's good to step back and take a breeze, maybe some more, and think about is that really what I want to do or not? Even it seems like a huge opportunity, but guess, imagine if this opportunity really happens and I, I succeed, how do I feel? What does it mean for me? What does it mean for others? Um, is that really what I want? And if yes, and then you can go totally focused. But if not, and then find out your your polo. So what is your yellow polo? Find it out and be clear on it. And I think one of the reasons we do not have a yellow polo focused plan is, or many of us, is those kind of topics are not really major part of our educational system, right? Like, I don't know, when I was growing up, uh, not even in my family, in my parents, we were kind of discussing these type of topics in terms of personal development, goal setting, time management, uh, personal finance, you know, all super important life topics. Uh, and I wonder how was your journey? Okay, this this thing happened to you. You had this conversation with the doctor. What was next? Did you start reading books, going to seminars, looking inside, meditating? What were the first few steps? And maybe there's many people listening and they need to make a pause. They need to have a pit stop right now and, and we can give them a bit of a perspective. Yeah, it, is, it start then um, questioning. So when you um, start to uh, ask the right questions, even to yourself, so like, okay, how now um, can I get more awareness? How can I manage myself? How, um, how to understand like um, uh, things, uh, for example, how does my brain work? How does the emotional um, uh, part is working? How is psychology and all this stuff? So you start to get curious. So curiosity is, is, and then you have to feed this curiosity with reading books, looking videos, uh, like YouTube videos. There are so many people doing, doing great stuff. And I never visit, I also visited some seminars and uh, it was more than on books, but on um, different topics because it's not like black or white. It's not just focusing on self-development books. Sometimes it's it's like a nice story, um, a book, a fictional book, but also inspires you. So it's like start to really stay curious and open. And even when I look, I watch, for example, um, uh, Netflix uh, series, I always like watch it like i am searching for the inspiration if there a character in this in this movie what i can learn something from because he's like asking good questions he's acting uh, like i would like to act so how do we, how is this character doing it so I, tr I i try to find like inspiration in everything what i do even if i just observing people so it's not about reading books but also in real life when you do your work and also observing yourself so if you are increasing your awareness how do, like observing yourself and then you do something and then you are at that moment you are aware okay this was not what i really aimed to act or what i wanted or what i aimed to say and then you reflect it and learn again so you really learn from outside reading books but also observing your right now the moment like observing others could be also movies fictional characters but also real characters and then, okay, say, this is something what I can learn from. Next time, I try to act like Harvey Specter, for example. Next time, I try to act like my supervisor or like my colleague, whatever, because I like this um, interaction. I like what he's, how he's responding to like challenges. I, I want to respond. And this is happening because you stay curious all the time, because you want to learn, you want to improve, and you're observing and getting information from outside. Um, so this, I guess, uh, the, in my case, uh, how it, it's still, it's still on, in process always. And, and I think this is, this is the key word, is the, the frame that you have. And in terms of the personal development, is this frame of, I'm amazing as I am, but I'm a work in progress. There's, there's always more I can learn. There's always a different perspective. There's always more skills, mindsets. So um, on the one side is the acceptance. Things are fine as they are. 
I shouldn't beat myself because I'm not really good in certain things or I have, I've done some mistakes, but it's always a work in progress. Definitely. I can always learn more and it's a commitment. It's a lifestyle. I, literally what you're saying, it's, it's not like I need to read a hundred books and then I'm, then I'm fine. You know, like, no, it's a, uh, you know, make it a lifestyle. How can I create habits that will consistently empower me? And we're talking about startups and founders right now. Like, do you have a morning routine? When you start the day, you start with the strong inspirational morning. And some people meditate, some people have a journal, some people go for a walk and listen to audiobooks and podcasts. Um, you know, exercise, reading books. Uh, you mentioned fiction books. Could be actually really, really cool to to read fiction books. That's what thing, your thing is, right? Um, business and leadership books, personal development and psychology books, but inspirational material, instructional material, uh, meeting people who are also high frequency people that you can exchange ideas. They don't have to be from your industry. Um, there's a book called Curious, I believe, and it's from a movie producer. I think his movies won or were nominated for more than 70 Oscars combined. Uh, and the way he does his work, the way he structures his life is much inspired by the conversations he has with people that he meets. And he has this strategy that he learned from his uh, grandmother. Basically, he invites people for coffee, exceptionally good people in whatever it is they do. It could be a doctor. It could be a, a I don't know, nuclear expert it could be a, a <laughs> you know somebody from the startup world but who are the best people out there he buys them lunch or dinner every second week and he asks them how do you do the surgery if it's a surgeon right how do you prepare what do you do so he talks to some super inspiring people who are achieved a lot who are exceptional in some areas and he extracts the best learnings and tries to incorporate them in whatever it is that he does which is what we do here in this podcast. I'm trying to pick your brain, Ersin. Uh, yes. that's, that's my you know, sort of goal, right? Is to try and extract the best learnings from the people who are there in a specific area. And hopefully we can inspire the audience to also get something out of it and, and take action. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that's kind of the, the way you also see your own personal development journey, but I would love to hear your perspective. Yeah, definitely, because it's like a bit directional. So as, as you said, okay, I'm like um, getting something from out of my brain to you and to learn something new. But I'm also in my case, I was asking myself, okay, what can I learn from this podcast? So I can learn, like, how should I do a um, podcast? How could I do? How is uh, Stoyan like organizing it in, the, in, the, in advance, inv inv inviting people? How, how is his process? So I also just right now learned so many things from you Till now, so how is a podcast like organized in advance? So, which, um, what, how is it prepared? What is technical um, equipment should I use? What is Stoyan using? How is how is it working? So, I already learned something from you because it was I was open. I was not just okay, just um, join this podcast, but I also opened my um, uh, my eyes and said, okay, how can I learn? Maybe. One day I will also do a podcast and they, now I have some idea, more idea uh, as I had before. But um, this also happens. Um, so maybe one um, example from my um, early um, consulting days. So I was like as a young consultant, you go on a project and you don't have really a good a clue on what you are doing. So you are totally depending on, on your team to learn. And then I was doing projects um, where, where the topic is, is was not my passion so I didn't like the topic in general so it was like it, it was I, I feel I felt okay it's I don't like this work because the topic I'm working on is not like um, catching me and then what can what maybe happens uh, in, in most cases is and then you are like demotivated because it's you don't like that work <clears throat> and then I tried to motivate myself Okay, then what can I learn from the situation? Because the situation is I have to do some work what I don't like to do. So what I have now learned is 
how do I respond to this? So I have now mentally trained my, my, my brain, don't get demotivated when you have to, to do stuff you have to do. It's, it's the job because you have committed to that job, you have to do it. And the, how do should I respond? Then I, this was my challenge then I'm on this all every day. How do I respond to things I don't like to do? So it's, and then you started, okay, now um, training my brain not to get demotivated, keep it uh, motivated because always it, this can happen. And even if you're a startup and then you have like, you're working on your product, you love on you love like the coding or building your product and you, or you like the, the sales part, but there will always, things will come up with what you don't like, bureaucracy or whatever, this will come up and then, when you like being aware of it, so how do you respond? The easiest way is, okay, I learn, I have to find someone who can do that for me. So you, you, like, you just stay in this in this routine and always like getting demotivated more well, then you, if you're open and you want to learn, then your exercise is, your homework is. So my conclusion was, okay, I have to brain, uh, train my brain. The other conclusion could be, okay, I have to find and mobilize people who can do that for me. And I go to another project, for example. So you're trying to find a solution for uh, what is not feeling good for you. And when we talk about startups and, and building your company, there's so much stuff that is not necessarily pleasant. I mean, we, we paint this picture online that uh, entrepreneurship is like this sexy, fun thing that, you know, 90% of the time, it's just like you're rocking it and you're building these amazing products and everything works well. But we both know the reality is <laughs> much different, yeah. right? I mean, this yeah. is the payoff. Exactly. Me com having a conversation with you, with you here on the podcast, this is, this is my fun part, right? Me doing a speech at a conference, this is my fun part. Me going to a retreat and, and being a, a coach and leading sessions, this is fun. People don't see the backstage, <laughs> all yes. the all the things, and, and every day you have this, um, so many moments. First of all, things that you they're not pleasant to do, you know, things that you don't like to do. But then, problems, challenges, unexpected uh, uh, things that show up at the day. Uh, how do you deal with that? And it's about building the mindset. And and I wonder what what are some of the, you know, you work with many founders. What are some of the uh, the things that you would invite them to do more of when it comes to personal development? Like you probably observe how they do things and like, would you recommend any specific things of where they start so they can build this lifestyle, this mindset of being fully committed to their personal development? Yeah. So when we like work with um, startups, so you always, you know, okay, you, you, uh, we try to understand where are you now? So what is the, the point the, from the, where is the baseline? What is the status where we are and what do we, so we can do a plan for, for, for the startup. Like how can we grow the startups? This is what we typically the conversation start. So let's say you have a startup in the early stage, early phases, um, like they are working on their product and then you're trying to make a plan how to improve, how to get this product ready for the market. And another challenge could be how to, um, find now an investor to invest the growth stage. So whether depending on where you are, so you try to find out where we are. And then from this point, then we are starting to do a plan. This applies for startups in each, in every stage. So find out what is the, the starting point. And from there, where do you want to head to and what do we need to do? So, so this we do it very precisely for the startup itself. We have like KPIs, we defining milestones, and then you break it down to tasks and so on. We do it very precisely on, on paper, all this work. And then we, you go uh, to, to, uh, to execute, but we don't do it for ourselves. So, so we are totally focused on, on the startup progress. But let's say we have to build a team. So then you start, and you have so so we are saying okay, we have to fire hire five people. But you don't have. We don't ask ourselves. I am. Are you ready 
to hire those people? Are you ready to um, find out who's the right um, man or woman? Are you ready to lead all these guys? So if this is where the, the, the connection is coming to growing your startup and growing yourself, so you do it like the yellow polo, we have to do, we have to hire people. Yes, okay. But if we do this in parallel, you should be like ready in finding out the right people, mobilizing the right people, finding the right words to motivate it. And then once they are on board, are you ready to lead these people? What happens uh, otherwise is, okay, maybe you are good in sales and then you hire them and then they are on board and then they are bored or, or not really utilized and then, then all this stuff happens. So this is also uh, what I say, okay, when we do um, an action, what is required for the startup, then the second question is always ask yourself, I am ready for this. What should I do? Maybe I have to do some practice or I have to find someone who can help me with this because at the moment, my point, so the startup is here on, let's say, uh, on, on, on one, on one uh, level, but I'm not at the same level. So my personal capabilities are beyond before or after. So maybe in some cases you are you're already more than um, you, you would require. So you, you, you already like you can lead people, you can motivate people, but then it's a good it's a good situation. But if you are a first time founder always, so typically you are below. So you from a personal perspective, you have to learn to adapt to the growth. Otherwise you grow, but this growth is not sustainable because then it crashes afterwards because your personal um, development is behind uh, the, the status of your startup. And then you feel like stressed because then have you have all these people on, on board and they are questioning you and you feel stressed. You have to develop the startup and then you have also developed people and also yourself and it's it's stressing you. And this is um, where I also say, okay, what you mentioned, uh, what we are talking about is also the plan is one and then the execution. So what the, the, the most important part of the plan is what are you doing tomorrow? So you have like a five-year, a three-year plan, but what are you doing tomorrow? Be clear on that and do that. And this is um, sometimes what we are young founders, especially young founders, um, are struggling with. So you have the plan for 12 months, but it's not clear on what to do today, what to do tomorrow exactly. And do that, please do that. Because um, the connect to making the connection from what you're doing today for things what is relevant in, in 12 months is, is hard to, to get this connection. Let's say make a list of clients. It, it's, it sounds so obvious and okay, that's easy. So we have to do more strategic. Uh, so now uh, it is a tiny part. What is very important, make a list or take time to think about yourself. Reflect yourself, take a coffee. 30 minutes, drink your coffee and just come down. And this is also a task you should do. This is what you can do today, just today. Now, take a coffee, 30 minutes, think about nothing, just come down and do it every day, for example. Do it that's tomorrow. A, and, that's, and that's the core thing, man. Block it in your calendar. Make it a task. You know, otherwise, as a founder, you're so busy. You can, you can work 100 hours. There'll be more tasks to do. And that's the main excuse we give ourselves, right? Like, I don't have time, man. You know, I love to reflect. I love to plan. I don't have time to plan my time, right? Like, and then you get into this cycle. You need to have regular pit stops. You need to have space for reflection, to look into yourself. And by the way, that's where you start, right? You're talking about the five-year, three-year plans. We need to define what success means to begin with. You know, like, yes. do you, let's start a company. Yeah. Lots of passion. And three years later, it's like, why did we even start? I, I did the fast, you know, that I'm working with the startup wise guys, leading startup acceleration program in Europe. Uh, since 2016, I was the, the reason for the fastest exit uh, a, a company did in the, in the portfolio. So how did that happen? So I usually come, come on board in an acceleration programs as the first or the second week. 
because the, the stuff we do with perform is very fundamental team alignment you know um culture leadership those kind of topics so there was a program in Tallinn. they flew me in monday it was the second week um and i see these guys with uh, with their luggages they just came from the airport just enter the program so we did a workshop on finding your purpose what is the why behind what you do, right? Because you might have a great product, but why do you even build this company? Is that connected to your personal motivations? What's the kind of difference you want to make to the world with this product on top of making money and, and building it? Okay, we do this workshop. People get excited. And then I have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the teams. One of the teams, uh, this team with the luggages from Armenia, they come to me, they hug me. Stoyan, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow, we found our why. I'm like, okay, what's your why? And they were having a this push notification kind of app where you know if you're a company, you can you can control it and you can kind of use it for your app to push notifications and so on. And I think they had like some traction, like a thousand users, uh, you know, building it, getting there. I'm like, okay, so what's your why? That's the thing. Uh, I met this girl and I'm like, okay. Um, and I don't know how to talk to her. And I'm like, okay. And now I know there's so many other people like me. We want to help people to communicate better. And how is your app going to solve this? That's the thing. <laughs> it can't. I'm like, okay, okay. So we spend like, 30, 40 minutes. We're trying to kind of see if they can pivot and, and they hug me at the end. Man, that was, uh, thank you so much. You know, I get a call the same evening by the program manager. What did you do with these guys? They're flying back to Armenia. They're, they're quitting. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the fastest exit. She was kind of angry on me at first, but then, by the way, startup wise guys, this is one of the main things they usually do. They ask you, what's your why? What's your purpose? Unfortunately, this specific team didn't make it to the pre-boot camp, pre-selection boot camp. So, um, you know, you got you to gotta know why you do it, man. Because yeah. two years, five years down the road, you'll figure out, I'm not personally motivated to actually make this happen. What is your why? What is your vision? You know, if you close your eyes and imagine where the company is going to be, how many people are there, what is the culture, how do we act, who do we serve? Do you have this picture in your head? It might change. The vision might change. But do you have it right now? So you can start building backwards. And what kind of lifestyle is this going to give you? Exactly. Because, I mean, if you have a vision, hey, I'm going to push it through. I'm going to work my ass off for five years. And then we'll go to a place that this and this and this will happen and this will support my personal lifestyle and my ambitions. Do you have this idea in mind? Or are you just like, let's build a business because it's cool to build a business, right? So this is the starting point. What does success look like to you? Um, and I wonder, Erisin, what's your, what's your thoughts on that as well? Yeah, it is like um, success, it's hard to define and uh, I think it's, something you have to find out because now when you when you know in your in your case when you think 10 years in in, in into the future like uh, 2032 at this time you will also make a progress the things you will see in 2000 in 10 years maybe might be different as you see today so what you define today as success Maybe in 10 years, we would say, okay, no, this is not success. When I was 16, I would define success other uh, um, differently than I would do it today. So, and then you aim to go for a definition. And then at the end, you identify, okay, no, this was wrong. And then it happens again, the next 10 years. And all this, so, so my personal view on this is, okay, it is always happening. So the life is happening right now. So what, when you feel today, I'm doing the right thing, then it then it's it's already success because you are doing the right thing, and um, it's not like I'm gonna be happy in ten years when I have achieved so many things. So I have the vision. It's good to have that vision. I, it's very important to have it, and I explain it uh, in, in a few seconds why. But it is also it's more important to, that you feel that you are doing the right thing <clears throat> right now. So I totally feel committed and I, I'm happy that we are now talking about it. I'm totally focused on this 
because it's I feel it can, we can reach so many people and we can inspire them. So it's, it's important. I feel happy doing this. I feel this feels right. It is good to do it. And then it's, it makes me happy. It is successful. Right now it is successful. And uh, so this is one point of view uh, on, on, on success. And what uh, what helps me is I like for me I define like a I don't know it's not a, uh, I have to find a name for it it's it's like a framework how I try to understand the things what are happening today and how do I make like the plans for the vision um, so imagine a circle a circle and this is you so you are in in a circle and then who are you so it is like your physical body. It is part of you. And then we have the mental, which is your thoughts, your beliefs. And then you have the emotional part of you. So your feelings, your emotions, ang anxiety, joy, whatever um, you, you feel. It is like feeling, emotions. And then you have there for me, it, there is also like a fourth part. What is the spirituality? So something what you cannot really explain it's it's not thought it's not feeling it's not physical but there is something obviously what is like somehow guiding you giving you inspiration it's like a, an idea what is coming to your mind or the ability to observe your your own thoughts so you can believe on that or not but, but there is something it's hard to explain it, it, it's it's there so i i can feel it in in, in my case so this is this is me and then around you you have the physical environment so this is something you can change maybe you just move or it is how it is the earth the planet is your physical environment the place you are working you're working your desk is your physical environment you can change or you can you are feeling comfortable or not so this is the true, the, the reality, the physical environment. And then this physical environment is like um, having an impact on you. Do I feel comfortable on my desk? Is it dirty? Um, do I live in the right city, in the right place? It's too, too hot, too cold, whatever. So how do you respond? So how this is like impacting you and how do you respond to this? So I feel unhappy because it's all the day raining. So the physical environment impacts you. Or you can just re uh, respond independently what the physical environment. I, I always able from a spiritual, physical, mental, or emotional part to respond how I would like to respond it. So, and I always feel happy or not. And then the next circle around the physical environment are people. This is your family, your friends, your colleagues, your teammates, whatever people in your <clears throat> life are interacting with you. So this is also like having an impact on you. There are people who are like um, not treating you as you would like to be treated. So you feel uncomfortable or you feel unhappy because these people are somehow try to uh, control you or try to guide you or telling you things you have to do, but you want to, you want to do. And depending on how strong and how good you know yourself, you will allow people to change you so it's not the true you it's like the uh, from the people like adjusted you because they guided you this way but it was not really you and then the um, <clears throat> outer circle is i call it context and model this is like the context the model of democracy of family of company it's it, at the end it's just a model it's 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 a definition of laws rules commitments so it's culture so this in western europe it's like family is defined this way it has to work that way a company is defined by law when it is like registered in any uh, kind of um, books and it's then the company there so this is something what also is there <clears throat> and it's made by people oh it's made by people so the outer circle is made by people people define laws uh, and regulatory all this stuff and all this impacting to you but now, when you talk about vision, is with whom's vision are you defining? So when you come with a personal vision, and then you like to, I, and now I have to, uh, let's say, uh, I'm going for um, to reduce um, children's deaths, for example. This is your mission. 
So is it because it is really, it was your mission? So when you go deeply in, inside yourself, is it your mission or is it a mission because your physical environment in, in which you are acting shaped you or the people around you with you were acting with uh, was like um, shaping and defining your vision or the context, the model, let's say democracy, you were um, like influenced by whatever kind of model, school, for example. And this is the reason what is, why it is your mission because the more it comes from outside to you and you define a mission, what is mainly may influenced by outside, but it's just articulated by you. Then it, is it your mission? Question mark. But when you, it's, it's from outside in defined mission or vision. I think what is more relevant for, it is my belief, when it's like from inside out mission. So it is really, you don't care. It's hard to be not influenced from your physical environment. It's not from your from the people around you and the model, the context you know, um, to really have an inside out mission. So it's really coming out inside you from the spiritual part, maybe. It's like, how do you feel connected to all this? Um, why are you here? Uh, what is really your heart, your passion for? And then if it's coming really from inside and then you you will impact. So your vision when it's come true will impact your physical environment. You will impact the people. You will impact the context and models. So it, it will have a more impact and it will feel all the time right. Not not so it's, it's if an inside vision, inside out vision, you will each step every day every moment what are you doing you feel fulfilled because it's not when i once it's happened you always feel this is um what i think on it thanks for sharing man what what a useful framework uh it really made me think already by just listening to it and uh, i think many people can can think into am i aligned right if, if i'm feeling a little bit off track why is that the case? Uh, because when you create this alignment, you know, if you're running a startup, you're building a business, is if that's aligned with who you are from the inside, you are a lot more likely to stick to it, especially through difficult times. You wake up in the morning, you have a very difficult day, but you know why do you do it? It's connected to your values, it's connected to who you are. And maybe if we can uh, look into your own processes, I'll be curious to also explore do you do you kind of look into this uh, framework or have any other process to reassess for yourself uh, how am i doing mentally emotionally spiritually am i in balance do i have to make some changes in my lifestyle in my work in my family life do you have any kind of a process that you do in a um, on a regular basis so you can ensure that your time, energy, and focus goes towards the things that matter most? So um, it is, for, in my case, it is awareness. So being aware of my, it's my, all the four parts, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So having this like a dashboard, you can just think about it and feel it and get this reflection. It, it happens regularly during all the days. So, so I don't have any routine at one time. Now it's uh, like a meditation time. So I, I try to go through the day with um, awareness and being really aware of what is happening in my mind. So what kind of thoughts do I have and how do I feel at that moment physically and um, mentally? And then the guidance, um, what I try to use is uh, to things what is um, love and respect so my mother um, told me because my mother um, married with, when, when she was 14 already and uh, she never visited a school so she cannot read and write and she, she always told me okay it's important that you learn to read and write it's important that you get a good education I can't tell you on which school you have to go. I can't tell you what kind of job you should do because I don't have any experience on that. But I have two things what always will guide you and keep that always in mind. And this was love and respect. So 
if you always feel if if you feel loved and if you can feel and exp- impress love to the environment and to the people you are interacting with you are on a good track if it's not always love it's not love not in only in terms of romantic love it's also like passion and the second one is but also will help you is respect do you feel respected do you respect like the environment the nature the people you are doing so if you have both you are in track if one of those is like getting out of balance you should be like okay um, it's like an alarm am i doing the right thing i don't feel loved where i am so maybe i have to ch- change myself or i have to change my environment i have am i doing the right job do i love it if i don't love it i really respect because it's 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 helpful for someone then i'm on, on the right track and this is always like an sensor guiding me all the day so when i feel like oh, unhappy and then i oh, then I'm reflecting okay it's just a moment where i feel unhappy but if i really reflect it and then at the end i really love what i do okay i'm on a good track and and uh, if i look back on all these changes i made in my professional station so it's doing the sales i felt unhappy I didn't really love at at one time. I didn't really love what I do because, and I and and, and ask I question myself again and again, and then I come to the I don't love it. So I am not on the right track. I have to move now. I can't I can't change. I try to change myself to respond. So actually, okay, this is I get all my um, learnings. I can't make an impact. It's it's not. I'm loving it, so I have to change it. And these are the two. It it, it for me it makes simple. Um. And then having the sensors on all the day, it's not one time, it's not a slot, it's not a routine, it's the routine, it's having it all the time with you. Man, I love simplicity and what a great way to wrap up this episode. If we all use these two as a compass, love and respect in anything we do. And as you said, I love this this part, it's like it goes both ways. Am I feeling loved and respected? Am I giving love and respect to the other side, to the people, to the project, to the customers, to any person that I meet on the way? This is amazing. Thank you so much, Ersin, for being with us today, to sharing all these um, stories, examples, insights. And for people who are interested to get in touch, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you, with Brick? And what are the kind of opportunities that you guys are offering for founders and entrepreneurs? So the best way to get in touch in both cases for me with being personal is a LinkedIn. So if you will look for Ersin Uston or just ask Stoyan in any case, he can make the connection. So follow me on LinkedIn. You can write me, DM me on LinkedIn. And also you can follow brick.com on LinkedIn. There you will find all the upcoming events and programs and offerings we will have for startups and founders. Um, this is the best way to get connected. Thank you once again. And th- thanks everybody for, for listening, for joining uh, this live stream, but also listening to the podcast afterwards. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with a friend. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Of course, we'll be very grateful if you decide to leave us a review that help us to reach even more people with, with our message and Uh, Stay tuned because uh, on top of this amazing episode, we have a few more episodes this week to be recorded. Uh, They're going to be a bunch of really, really cool guests uh, like Ersin. So make sure to to stay tuned. Send us a message. Let us know how do you like the episodes and who do you want us to invite. Uh, Stay safe. You know, take care of yourself. Take care of your personal development, but also keep performing it was a pleasure guys and see you once again at the next episode of productivity mastery have an amazing and productive day bye